In this tutorial, we will learn how to set up a water simulation like this in Blender. And for this, we will use the Blender EV engine. We will discuss some basic details about fluid simulation, challenges, and their solutions. It will help if you already have knowledge about the smoke simulation in Blender, as the simulation basics are quite similar. Now, let us start with a blank new composition. We will first convert this default cube into a bathtub. So we have to resize this cube. Let us scale it up by a factor of 5 in the x dimension, then a factor of 3 in y, and just 1.5 for the height. This is the outside part of our bathtub, and for the inside part, go to the add menu, and add another cube. We have to resize this second cube such that, it is little smaller than the first one. So, we can scale it up, by 4.5 in the x dimension, then by 2.5 in the y, and by 1.3 in the z dimension. Now, we have to also move it up slightly, so that it goes just above the first object, as we want to have an open face on the top. Let us change its Z location to point 3, and we get exactly what we wanted. In order to cut out the material for the cavity, select the first cube. Then go to the Modifiers tab, and add a Boolean modifier. Ensure that the Difference option is selected. Select the second cube in the target object, and apply this modifier. We can now hide this second cube. So we get a nice bathtub shape on our first object, but we can make it even better by adding some bevel effect to it. So, add a bevel modifier to this. Let us change the number of segments to 5. As a result, the bathtub now looks very nice, and we are done with this. Let us rename this object to, bathtub. We will now add the pipe into this scene, so hide this bathtub for the time being. Next step, to create the pipe, go to the Add menu, and from the curve, add a Bezier curve. We have to first edit the shape of this curve little bit, so go to the Edit mode. Then, change the shape of the curve, to make it suitable for a pipe. If you are new to Blender, you can check my foundation level tutorial on the curve editing. The link is in the video description. Okay, we are done with this curve, so let us go back to the Object mode. In order to convert this curve into a hollow pipe, go to the Add menu, and add a Bezier circle. This is too big for the pipe, so resize it to 0.25. Now, select the Bezier curve, and go to this curve tab here. Then scroll down, all the way to the geometry section, and expand it. Under this, we have another section, for bevel. Switch over to the Object tab. Then in the Object field, select the Bezier circle. The curve has now taken the shape of a pipe. You can hide this Bezier circle, but don't delete it. Let us bring back our bathtub as well. We will rotate this pipe, and place it at one end of the bathtub. So, select it, and modify its orientation by rotating along the three dimensions, as needed. This pipe is mostly for a decoration purpose here. Our primary focus will be on the bathtub. I have created a separate tutorial on how to simulate water flow through a pipe, you can find the links below. So, we are ready with our bathtub, and the inlet pipe. We will now add the physics here. So go to the add menu, and under mesh, add an UV sphere. For the fluid simulation that we will build, this will work as the flow object. If you are coming with some prior knowledge on smoke, or fire simulation, it will help to understand these concepts easily. For example, we know that we need a flow object, and a domain, for a bare minimum setup. So we will make this our flow object, and we will place it just at this end of the pipe, so the water will come out from here. First, resize the sphere to 0.25. Then use the move tool, to place it right at the pipe opening. Make it precise enough. Maybe, we can reduce its height factor, to 0.23, so that it does not intersect with the ceiling of the pipe. Okay, little more fine tuning is needed, otherwise the water will leak through the pipe, and it won't look very natural. Now, in order to change this sphere, into a flow object, go to the Physics tab, and enable the Fluid property. This type should be set as Flow, because we want the water to come out from this object. So, change the type to, Flow Type. We get more fields here, so select the Flow Type as Liquid. Then scroll down, and in the Geometry, select Inflow Type. So, we will have the water coming from this end. And we also need a domain object which will contain this water. 
For that, we can definitely add another cube object and set that as the domain, but we can just reuse this cube which we used initially to cut the material from this bathtub. Let us rename it to domain, since we will now use this as our domain object. And, this sphere, which is our flow object, can be similarly renamed as flow for our easy reference. So, we will turn this object into the fluid domain. But before that, we need to ensure that it covers the flow object entirely. So, scale it up a little bit, to adjust its height, and move it up, so that the flow object remains within this domain object. Now, to convert this into a domain, ensure that it is selected, then go to the Physics tab, and enable the Fluid property. Then select the type as, Domain. So, you get a lot of other fields here. The first one is the domain type. Let us expand this little bit, so that we can see the labels better. In the domain type, please select liquid. As soon as we change that, you can see that this object turned into a solid object, like it was earlier. We will rectify this later, we will see how to make the water visible. But for the time being, let us turn on the wireframe view mode, so that we can see what is happening inside the domain. The next field to talk about, is this resolution divisions. If you use a higher value, the quality of the fluid will look better, but it will also take longer time to simulate. Let us use 64. You can try with even higher values. Okay, then another important field for a fluid simulation is this liquid checkbox. Please ensure that this option is enabled. When it is enabled, Blender uses a particle system, which we can verify from here. A particle system called liquid is now attached to our domain. So, you can leave all other fields with their default values. And, here you have the simulation start frame number, and end frame number. So the fluid simulation will run from frame 1 to frame 250, and then it will stop. Currently it matches with our scene start frame, and end frame, but you can always enter some different numbers here, based on the specific requirement of your project. Let us now run the simulation to verify it. You may not see anything happening immediately. That is because, Blender has kept the old cache, which is blank. You can either delete these cache folders, or a simpler way is, you can make any little modification in this resolution divisions, so that Blender is automatically forced to delete the old cache, and recreate them. Now if you go back to the first frame, you will be able to see this little blue dots on our flow object. This gives us a quick indication that the simulation will be visible this time. Let us run the simulation, and verify how it goes. So, we can see that the water is coming out from our flow object. Then it is filling this domain, which is also our bathtub, as they share the same volume. These dots are basically the particles. We need to set up a material for this water, so that it looks more real. But we have some problem here. It is falling down like a waterfall. We would like the water to come in this direction, with some force. For that, stop the simulation, and select the flow object. Then in the Physics tab, we have to enable the initial velocity. Under this, we have to use a suitable value for initial x, because this is the x dimension. So, let us enter some arbitrary value here, like 12 meter per second. Now go back to the first frame. And like before, we have to make some change on the domain object, so that it is forced to clear the cache and rebuild it. Okay, let us now run the simulation again and verify it. Cool, we can see the water coming in this direction with a force. However, it seems the force or the velocity is too high for this. We need to reduce it little bit. So, select the flow object again, and you can just experiment with the velocity, maybe we can reduce it to 8. Then go to the domain and make some changes to the resolution divisions. You know why we need to do that. Now run the simulation again. So, this looks almost perfect. The water is coming out with an appropriate speed, so we will make this as final. Next step. We can actually hide the flow object, so that the water seems coming out from the pipe realistically. But, if you now turn on the rendered view mode, you won't be able to see anything about the fluid simulation, because this domain object is just like a solid object here. If you have worked with the smoke simulation earlier, you can understand that the rendering part is significantly different in a fluid simulation. Here, we have to first bake the simulation, only then it will be visible in the render output. To bake the data, go down under the physics tab for the domain. 
You can see this cache type is selected as replay. Please change it to modular and enable this is resumable option. Once you do that, you will see that a bake data button has appeared here, which is to be used for baking this fluid simulation. So click on it and you can see the progress here. It might take some time to finish. Once this baking is complete, go down here and you will find a mesh option. Enable this and expand it. You will see one button here called bake mesh. You have to bake this also. And you can see the progress here. Just in case you want to stop it for any reason, you can press the escape key on your keyboard. Once the bake is successfully done, go back to the first frame and run the simulation again. So, you can see that the water is flowing nicely, but its color is just white, it is not correct. The water that we see here is nothing but the domain object itself, so we need to set up a suitable material for the domain object in order to see the real water. Before that, let us turn on the HDRI lighting here for a better outlook of our final render. Now, select the domain object and go to the Materials tab. Create a new material. A principal BSDF is added by default. In the base color, select some color that gives a watery feel, maybe some light sky blue or something else that you like. Also, we need to make it little transparent so that it looks like water. We have to make few changes for that. First, change this transmission value to 0.9 or 1 if you want a full transparency. Then scroll down and turn on this screen space refraction option. Then go to the render properties, enable the screen space reflections and expand this. Enable the refraction here. Now, let us go back to the first frame and play the animation one more time. Nice. The water flow is now looking beautiful. Of course you can make it even better with a better designed bathtub, or a tap, or by adding more components into this scene. You can play with various settings of the domain object to experiment with this water. We will discuss some more topics on fluid simulation in next tutorials, but let me quickly show you a trick to add a fancy effect to this water, a combo of material and particle flow together. First, select the domain object and go to the materials tab. Then scroll down below and change this blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. Now if you play the simulation again, the texture of the water will look very different. It now contains the water material that we have set up, as well as the particles since we made the water material almost transparent and it is blending with the particles. Another important thing that I want to show you is, in the physics tab, for the domain, you will find all these fields is grayed out, you cannot change them. You need to click on this free data button to clear the cache, and then these fields will get enabled again, and you can change the settings to experiment with your fluid simulation. Do share with me what result you get. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.